Cyrax. If you are watching this video and it's not on Cyrax and Flyrax's channel, please tell a member of staff. We reserve the right to instruct our lawyers to insist on the death penalty for copyright infringement. The next step after the Vril Flying Saucers was the Honeyboo series of craft. By 1939 the SS had produced the RFC-5, which it called the Honeyboo-1. In August 1939, the machine made its maiden flight and proved its viability. The early Honeyboo-1 craft, of which two prototypes were constructed were 25 meters in diameter, had a crew of eight, and could achieve the incredible initial velocity of 4,800 kilometers, but at low altitude, further enhancement enabled the machine to reach 17,000 kilometers flight endurance was 18 hours. To resist the incredible temperatures of these velocities, a special armor called Victolin was pioneered, specifically for both the Honeyboo and Brill series of disc craft. The Honeyboo 1 had a double hull of Victolin. The early models also attempted to test out a rather large experimental gun installation, the twin 60mm KSK Strong Ray Cannon. It has been suggested that the ray from this weapon made it a laser, but it was not. It could transmit a powerful energy burst suitable to pierce up to four in of enemy armor. When a Vril 7 was shot down by the Russians, in 1945 a similar underbelly mounted KSK gun was destroyed, with debris recovered from the battle site. The heavy gun installation, however, badly destabilized the disc, and in subsequent Honeyboo models lighter MG and MK cannon were supposedly installed. The Honeyboo 1 first flew in 1939 and both prototypes made 52 test flights. In 1942, the enlarged Honeyboo 2, which was 26 meters diameter, was ready for flight testing. This disc had a crew of nine, and could also achieve supersonic flight of 6,000 to 21,000 kilometers with a flight endurance of 55 hours. Both it and the further developed 32 meter diameter Honeyboo 2 had heat shielding of two hulls of Victolin. The craft were constructed and tested between 1943 to 44. The craft made 106 test flights. By the end of 1940, the Honeyboo 2 had entered service as a reconnaissance aircraft, and there is certainly photographic evidence to support this. For example, one was caught on camera near Antarctica. In 1940, the design of the Honeyboo 2 should be noted for future reference, whatever their exact nature. It appears confirmed that the range of alternative design aircraft were by now on the drawing board or hovering above the ground. Some of these designs proved worked and successes were being reported on 17th April 1945. By 1944, the perfected war model, the Honeyboo 3, was tested. Two prototypes were built. These massive machines, several stories tall, were crewed by 20 men. They were also capable of hypersonic speed beyond 21,000 kilometers. The SS had intended further plans for a 120 meter diameter Honeyboo 4 were in the works, but no such craft is known to have been constructed before the end of the war. However, these new technologies were coming online too late, for the war was already being lost, and won. Within months the Allies and Russians had poured into Central Europe. Hitler was thought dead and the war apparently over, and as soon as the war was over, ghost rockets started appearing over Scandinavia, and within two years flying saucers were being reported wholesale over mainland United States. It was no coincidence.
the new believers 